This week's episode of Aussie Tech Ads is brought to you by Start New Company. Register your company immediately today with ASIC. ABN, TFN, GST registration is also available directly from the portal. Also set up your family trust and self-managed superannuation fund and more. All at startnewcompany.com.au. Follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash startnewco and keep an eye out for our regular specials. Start your new company now within 10 minutes of lodgement. All legal company documentation provided after registration. startnewcompany.com.au. Also brought to you by ATHWebhosting.com.au. All our servers are operating on SSD drives, immediate activation, SSL certificates, Aussie support, domain registration, and more. Easy install WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, and 300 other one click installations. Generous space and bandwidth, auto backups, WordPress help, and maintenance plans are also available on contact. If your webpage is important for your business or your life, contact us today. Aussie support, secure services, ATHWebhosting.com.au. And now for the show. Yes, if your web page is important to you or your life. <laughs> I love that bit <laughs> for some reason. Uh, uh, hey, uh, welcome everyone. It's episode 699. Can you believe it? 699 uh, of Aussie Tech Eds and it's coming, being recorded at the 22nd of October 2020. And uh, this weekend is a late grand final weekend for both codes. And so I can't wait for the NRL one at least anyway. So go the Penny Panthers straight off the bat. But look, um, we're all going good down here or up here or wherever, wherever you may be listening. Take the, the, the correct uh, locational uh, direction there. But let's uh, get straight into it and we'll welcome this week's co-host and it just seems to be as usual when when we are on together once a month <laughs> it's uh paul how you doing paul great glenn glenn it's really good uh, to see you that's good what have you been up to let me while i fix the video i've been pretty busy I had a pretty hectic day today getting ready for this one as as we well know um things didn't go the way they were supposed to and i was walking home quite nicely until it started raining Oh, is that what so, was going on? Yeah, yeah, we got some uh, heavy rain predicted uh, this this weekend. We got our SES on standby. Got my, uh, you would have seen, I got my uh, National Service Medal last weekend. Well, what does that mean? 15 years service uh, you know, in emergency services. Uh, you get a uh, National Service um, Medal, comes from federals, uh, federal government. Um, oh, congratulations. So a, That's really yeah, good. And I got 15 years for uh, state as well as uh, my tenure one, which was never given to me. So I had a few awards coming my way. Yeah, oh, so you haven't got them yet? You've just been told yeah, you. No, no, I got, I got them last weekend, yeah. Oh, yeah, right. I got me a little, like, they look a lot, they're the, they look very similar to uh, military medals because they, they come from the same place. Right. Are you allowed to um, do anything with them? Like, do you get accepted yeah. as the best table in the restaurant or anything? I, I doubt that. I, I think I, I don't, I'm not sure, but I think I can pretty much wear them when, as long as I'm in a respectable uh, outfit, it's, I can wear them whenever and wherever I want. Right. So, oh, so, I did, so there are rules around where you can wear them. Like, you can't wear them with, like, a, um, a wife beater and thongs. No, that's right. You've got to, there's certain conditions, certain times of day you can wear them, um, and there's certain uh, breasts you can. You can only wear state ones on the left and national on your right. And oh, right. There is criteria. I, I need to read the instructions here. It's only about 85 pages. Jeez. You, know, you, it's, you just don't realise these rules around these things, eh? Because, like, because I got a flag, like an Aussie flag from our local member, and apparently you can you can get two a year from your local federal member for free. So <laughs> oh, I'm, really? Yeah. Yeah, I rocked down there and got one. Well, I had to email first. And anyway, so I got one. And then uh, in the bag with the flag was all the instructions on, you know, like you don't let it touch the floor and uh, you got to always respect it if you don't tear it or anything like that, if it's looking a bit haggard, and then you've got to chuck it out apparently you've got to cut it up so it's unrecognizable before you throw the pieces away so oh, is that right yeah and you can't use it as a hanky can you uh not in public no 
<laughs> but it'll going to be pretty hard to blow onto a. Oh no, this one's all right. I was thinking the you know, the old the old ones, you know, where they're all stitched and everything. It'd be hard blowing your nose on the Union Jack <laughs> stitching. So. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's what I've been up to. Like, that was a big weekend for me last weekend, getting out of ward. Oh, that's very good. Did you um, have you got pictures up on your Facebook? I'll have to go and look if you I have, have. I have. Yeah, yeah. Go have a look at it sometime. Yeah, very good. Uh, presented with from the commissioner of. Uh, oh, I forget his name. Um, and yes, uh, the other guy. Um, he must have been a couple, of, a couple of important people. Anyway, yes, that's right. Oh, good on you. Congratulations. That's a good uh, a good effort, and uh, uh, it's good to see that you you yeah you you you're community minded. Well done. Very well done. Yeah. And we got and we got storms coming our way, I reckon. All right, so you'll be uh, putting those medals. Everyone will be going, come on, Paul, you're up first. You got the medals. <laughs> Get out there. Or, yeah. <laughs> you can find us on facebook.com forward slash Aussie Tech Eds and twitter.com forward slash Aussie Tech Eds, and not that I use it, uh, and youtube.com forward slash Aussie Tech Tech heads, that's right. I got lost in my own mind there. And also, look, a uh, big thank you to everyone that does uh, host with us at uh, athwebhosting.com.au. Like it's, uh, it's, it's. I, we, I, well, I appreciate it because my little gig. So I appreciate it. So it's, it's. I just want to thank you guys collectively. And if I ever come to comes to pass that I speak to you because you, oh, hopefully you want to upgrade or something. <laughs> no, if ever that time comes, well, uh, I'm always look forward to doing that. So thanks, uh, thanks for the hosting there, and also thanks to the Patreon. Uh, Donators, I suppose you would call them, or the the there is a special well, what, the, the patrons, I guess. patrons, the patrons. Yes, yeah. so, uh, who have we got here? We got uh, a big thank you. I don't know if there's a list here somewhere, and well, I know I get these wrong every week, every month, and look, I'm just going to say how how they come anyway because you'd be used to it by now. But C D Avenue, the bouncing yellow, <laughs> Daniel and Aman, David. And Chris and also Andrew, who uh, who sends his best wishes through the PayPal. So that's very good. So thank you, guys. It's, uh, that is also much appreciated. And I, um, I think we all have had a nice coffee uh, at some stage because of it. I think and, so. It keeps the lights, keeps the lights on as well, for me, to a better term. Yeah, and we've de-stressed a bit, so thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, look, uh, we were just having a bit of a chit-chat before the show just now because, uh, you know, like every time you turn the computer on, like nothing has changed over the last time since we did the show last, but things just don't work. And uh, what had happened to my uh, tech problem this week was just little things, you know, I loaded up the video software and the camera wasn't being detected. And then, so, you know, I, I restarted and did all the things that you do, no detection. And so I thought, oh, what's going on here? So they sort of started looking a bit deeper. And what had happened was that there was an update to the camera software and the camera, and that update changed the camera's name from Logitech HD camera to HD camera. And that's why- yeah, the, that's, that's that's logical, right? Yeah, very logical from Logitech. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, so, uh, but look- you know, there we go. Look, a couple of big events coming up soon. We've got the US election. Well, I've got a, my first story here is uh, about, well, more, not really about that, but uh, maybe going along the lines. You, know, you, should, you shouldn't be saying we've got the US election. There is the US, uh, US election. It's not ours. Well, it's probably, uh, you could say it's important for the whole of the, the Western world, um, maybe. So, yeah, but it would be interesting. And look, it is amazing, isn't it, how that, it, no one here votes, right? No one in Australia votes for the president, but we're all just so hooked on what's going on. Like, well, it, they influence our a lot of our lives in many different ways, especially yep. when you got. Oh, I'll be careful. You got a leader like they've got. It, it um, it's quite volatile. Yeah. So it's uh, yeah. So whatever side of the fence you're on, I'm sure uh, we wish you all the best. Now, uh, look, the first one, the first story, that we might as well get into it. Go for it. Is, uh, now, this, there's a, I don't know if you've heard of this. Now, I pulled this in because of uh, not what to do on Zoom and to always be careful about being on a Zoom call and a Zoom meeting. So, I think I've seen this one. Now, there's an anti Trump legal analyst of CNN. Uh, is it Jeff Tubin? Now, if I can get a, uh, I don't know, if it, should we keep paying him out? Will I get a picture? I'll get a picture of him because it's a no, very no. embarrassing story. So, okay. So, look, there's the thing there. There we go. Now, so Vice reported that they're, that they're, they're on a Zoom call. It was a, an election simulation featuring many of the New Yorker's biggest stars. And I won't listen because no one's heard of them. Uh, there's also a handful of other producers on the call from the New Yorker and WNYC. Now, Jeffrey Tubin has offered an apology because he was 
found masturbating on the Zoom video call and said he thought he had put the video on mute, which is weird in itself. Uh, but anyway, apparently he thought he'd, he'd closed the laptop screen, but the camera was still on. So as the laptop screen closed, well, I guess the camera focused rather well on what was going on downstairs. Yes, so, as you do, yes. But I, I don't understand why, what, the, does the election get you that excited? You know? yeah, yeah, hang on, I have to turn my camera off for a second here. <laughs> Just don't pull the screen down. <laughs> or anything else. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he angled the screen down and that was just straight to the private parts, wasn't it? Yeah, well, well he shouldn't have been, he should, I don't think he should have been doing it anyway. Doesn't matter even if he was off, off the, I suppose he could do it in the privacy of his own home, I guess. But yeah, so he, he made an apology. He said, I made an embarrassingly stupid mistake believing that I was off camera. I apologise to my wife, family, friends and co-workers. I believe I was not visible on Zoom. I thought no one on the Zoom call could see me. I thought I had muted the Zoom video. Uh, yeah, so he's a prominent anti-Trump voice, uh, this guy, Jeff Tubin, and has been seen often on CNN talking at length about the impeachment of Trump. He's also been working with the New York for 25 years. So he's not a young dude. He's not like, you know, got the all the, the, the loins and everything have all got... A, excited about the election simulation that he's had to go oh i can't wait and then <laughs> flopped it flopped it out and went and had a go but yeah so <laughs> but a very funny story i thought i was just and it just goes to show like and i think i've we've seen a couple of these things happen you know people working from home and in the background their partner might walk past half naked and things yeah. like that i saw i saw a little kid uh, on a video this little kid was um uh, in a class with all his classmates and his mum was about to get in the shower or something. She walks past nude and grabs some jocks off the floor right in the middle of the camera and the teacher goes, well, who's that dude in the background? She carries on. Right. Like, well, I just can't, but they just going back to this story, like the poor bloke, like, does he have any friends? So, because he's, he, he's surrounded by all these the toffs, right? From CNN or whatever. But yeah. what, why does this story leak out? Like if those people were his friends, they wouldn't tell the story. Surely. You go, Maybe they sold it. I'd like to know like how many of them just, how long it took him before he realized. Like, yeah. were, were they all just going, Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. And, you know, you can hear this little squeaky, tinny little microphone voices in the back. You go, what is that? We're just calling my name. He goes, yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they found me at a moment. But yeah. it, won't, it won't be the last one. There'll be plenty more of those. Yeah, <laughs> I guess so. But look, it was just... Uh, it was just just one of those funny stories, and to just to listen to other commentators uh, talking about it is also quite funny because they're, they're all too much more serious than what I am talking about it. Yeah. Um, yeah so be careful with Zoom. And, and talking about Zoom, they've got their end-to-end -end encryption that they're trialing. Um, they, they're also bringing an app store out. So I'm not how, sure. How does that, I thought they fixed that a while ago. The uh, encryption or lockout or lockdown or whatever it was. Well, that's what I thought. But then I was just reading through things uh, just before, and the end-to-end -end encryption is maybe it was in beta. Maybe it was like Gmail for ten years. No, I think they maybe they just had the uh, waiting room, which was not available in the earlier editions of it. Right. Well, I could look it up. Let me have a look. So. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll look this up and see what see what that story was actually about. So, yep. So what do we what do we want? We want Zoom. Zoom, yeah. And to an encryption. Yeah, Zoom's latest security updates. When was okay. that? What's an app? So maybe I mean, yeah, maybe it wasn't end-to-end -end encryption. It was probably just the fact that because they had people were Zoom bombing and they uh, they eliminated Zoom bombing by using a waiting room. There we go. Here and maybe is. that's what I'm thinking of. No, so this is Zoom is rolling out end-to-end -end encryption. Uh, we're excited to announce starting next week. So this was written on October 14. Zoom's end-to-end -end encryption offering will be available as a technical preview, which means we're proactively soliciting feedback from users for the first 30 days. Zoom users free and paid around the world can host up to 200 participants in a E2E -E meeting on Zoom, providing increased privacy and security. So... Why wasn't it before? Oh, here we go. We announced in May our plans to build end-to-end -end encryption meeting options. Oh, okay. On top of Zoom's already strong encryption and advanced security features, we're pleased to roll out phase one of four, uh, which offers robust protections to help prevent the interception of decryption keys that could be used to monitor other meetings. Yes, because that's right. Because I think I think at some stage the uh, the meeting 
room numbers. Uh, they weren't randomly or encryptingly uh, selected. They were just they were just in a chronological order, apparently. So yeah, you could type yeah. in zoom dot us forward slash meeting forward slash and pick a number out of the thin air, and you jump in on someone's election simulation Zoom call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that um, that was a lot to do with Zoom bombing as well. And they, they sewed up, they fixed up Zoom bombing fairly quickly, I think, by um, putting the waiting room in place. Yeah, right. Yes, yes. So look, the Zoom, the Zoom is pretty much. Uh, you'd have to say it's better than Skype, wouldn't you? I like it better than Skype. Skype, it's got a lot more features, and the simple fact is, I've used a couple of different ones. I haven't used the new um, the new Google Meet. But uh, from what I understand, from from what I've used, I've used Facebook Messenger in in chats. I haven't used Facebook Rooms, and I don't think I want to have to muck around learning it. Um, <laughs> I've used Skype. I've used uh, Microsoft One. Isn't too bad, but um, the most robust one is I think is uh, Zoom because it, it, you can have a poor quality connection, and it will it will adapt and it'll cope. It'll Mm. You could even have a dropout if it was only for a split second and it won't drop you right out. It'll, it'll connect you back up immediately. I think the picture quality is better. Uh, look, I've, been, I've used the Microsoft Teams a little bit. Uh, and as far as, like, I know the, the person that I interact with on Teams has got an MBN you know, 140 connection and so the picture is pretty, pretty HD, pretty nice. Uh, yeah. uh, but the if you if we, if I was to call him on the Skype, it it'd just be degraded a bit. I just don't. I think Skype's just clunky. I don't even have Skype open on my machine yeah. these days. Um, yeah, I don't have it open or or installed. Skype is is an old technology, and Microsoft I don't think is pushing it out there much. They're just moving forward with new systems for the corporate world and uh, enterprise are using um, Teams. Because uh, I, I use that through SES, we have to use uh, Microsoft Teams and all the collaboration tools and stuff like that, and um, it's it's pretty good. Mm. Um, but uh, I just think uh, t t uh, Zoom is top of the pile, and it'll be interesting to see. The, the thing I worry about with uh, Google, with Google Meet, Google keeps on changing their platforms to new ones every few years. And I don't want to have to muck around to learn something new mm. every time they bring something new out. They depreciate this stuff far. Oh, yeah, yeah, they get rid of it fast. Yeah, it's disgusting. Now, look, I know, uh, look, I've, t I've told Paul many times before, I had, Paul, you talk about yourself too much. And now he's got a, uh, you know, he's got a show note here and it's talking about himself again, but grammatically incorrect. He wants to tell you about his watch. He got, I want to talk about me watch, he says. Me watch. Yeah, tell show and tell time. Tell us about me watch. I got myself a watch. It's a um. Where am I putting this? In the middle there. Uh, on your wrist, hopefully. This looks. I know it looks a lot like an Apple Watch. Oh yeah, it does. I'll, I'll take it off. It, it's a real rip. It's a it's a good quality. It's not just a rip off. But it's actually a pretty good quality. The fact that it's so thick. Is that a SIM card slot in the side? Oh, that's what it might be. No, it doesn't need a SIM card slot. It has. It takes an, a thing called an eSIM. Yeah. You know what that is? Yes. So what's that little uh, that, slot in the that's, side? That slot is a speaker. Oh, right. Nice. Uh, speaker, microphone. Nice. There's a microphone on the other side. Got a button. Mm. Got the, the, so once you take yours off, and, I want to compare your watch to mine because this was modelled, I reckon, it's a Xiaomi. Xiaomi Mi Watch, it's called. Right. And if you want to click on the link, bring it up on screen. Now, compare that, right? Hold it up close. Yours is yours is thinner, much thinner. That was a major difference between the Apple and this one. Um, but you'll notice it's got a lot of other similar features. Same shape, it's square. I like square phones. It's got the um, the, the, the crown there. Yep. Just like yours. Um, it looks... Ah, they pretty much look... look it's, it's a direct rip-off, isn't it? What's the back side of yours look like? Pretty much the same. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty um, similar. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So, so it's the now, now, that, now that is oh, that operates on the. Um, it's only a, a, a two or three hundred bucks. Now there's a there's a catch with this. Oh, I'll put it down. Uh, we bring up the website while we're talking about okay, it. Yeah, uh, sure. I've got a link there. Um, this is not available in English. 
So it's actually, uh, this one is was bought out in China. It's made by Xiaomi, which is a Chinese brand, as we know. And it's only been bought out for the uh, Chinese market at this point. Right. If you have a closer look at that specs there. It'll have Chinese on English written there somewhere. They haven't even got an update available for um, for English yet. I'm pretty sure that's coming. Um, so how come the reviews are in English? Uh, well, because English people like me buy them and go, see, the, 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 uh, there's more to this. And what it's got, it's got the Xiaomi store, or the, it's called the Mi store. They show it to me. It's got a thing called the Mi store, which is like its operating It's It runs on Android. It uses the uh, Mi store to get the Mi apps. And guess what language the Mi apps are in? Chinese. Mm, yeah. Because Chinese, who are we? Um, we I got hammered uh, by using Google, so they made their own app store, and Xiaomi is just keeping that on the side in case the same thing happens to them. So, so you're saying when you turn it on, it's in Chinese? Yeah, yeah, and you have to install, um, you have to follow instructions, um, and it's easy enough to. There's some of it's English, but it's also got um, alongside that you've got access to the um, Google Wear operating system, which is in English. Mm. So I've got on my phone, I've got Google Wear and uh, the Me Store, and that's where you get your store apps from. But at the moment, you can't install any apps, uh, any um, apps from the uh, Google Store. Right. So it is very limited. I got this simply say, um, when you're driving, you're not you're not touching your phone. You have a quick look at your phone. You can do a simple press on the the, the like button, like someone sent me a message, and I'll I'll uh, press the like button. I can just press a on the like button for, for message. You, but, you can do voice or text, but it's not a monkey around because the keyboards are uh, Chinese. Does it, tie, to press, does it tie to your phone like the Apple Watch does? Yes. Yeah, but this one, it is tied to my phone, but this one has a eSIM, uh, an eSIM feature, which is not many manufacturers have. Only Apple's the only... Oh, there's a couple of different manufacturers have an eSIM feature where you type in your IM, IME number and it goes into the phone. And that way, if you se- uh, it goes in a watch, if you're separated from your watch, you can still make calls directly from the uh, watch. Now, because the only other problem is that there's not many carriers that do the eSIM. No, and guess what? My carrier doesn't do. Right. And so how much did you pay for it? Uh, it was only a, a couple hundred dollars. It was about $200. Whereas the, I think your Apple one's quite a bit more. And where'd you get, where'd you get it from? Uh, good old eBay. All oh, right, right. Yeah, now, exactly. have a look at this. This is one of the apps, for instance. Um, oh, no, that's weather. Oh, see, that's English. There we go. Look at that. <laughs> Can you see that? Oh, right, yes. What does it say? <laughs> so that, that's one of the apps that come from the app store. Right. Uh, I don't know how to use it. I don't even know how to use it properly yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'd be hard back to front as well. Yeah, I'm... I'm well, why has it got it's English got, numbers? What? Why has it got English numbers? Oh, well, I can change it. Let's go. <laughs> English numbers? Yeah. What do you mean? Do you think China has different uh, sorts of numbers to us? No. They, they show they depict them differently. They wouldn't. Do they? Is numbers universal outside of? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. In the 20th century. Really? All countries had numbers are, are, are international. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought they'd have their own squiggles. Oh, no, no. <laughs> I don't think so. I think they might. Oh, I look stupid if I'm wrong. Like, I did have this one originally, this uh, watch face, but that's not real easy oh, to read. Oh, that's ugly. Looks like intestines. <laughs> yeah. Um, I want to put back where I was. Mm. So I've just said, you've got different watch faces. But more importantly, you send me a message and it comes up on the watch and I can I can press my little button there and... Oh, that's seal those. Those right. are the Xiaomi things, and all, they're, they're all Chinese apps. If I press on one, let's go to, uh, oh, I don't know. Oh, I can't do this backwards. If I press on that, change what? Well, no. Ah. It's oh, too no. hard. Don't worry. People on the audio get it. So. Yeah, true. Sorry, people. <laughs> they Sorry get it. That. Anyway, that's me fancy a little thing. Um, beautiful. A beautiful watch, and it's very well ripped off of uh, Apple. Yeah, for, very for nice. a cheaper price, it's got all the features that the Apple has. Yeah, but this one is not in English; 
English. I'm hoping that there's going to be an update where I can update it, and then I'll be able to download Google Wear apps. Yeah. At the moment, I can't do that. And someone sends me a message, it appears in the notification, and I can do like uh, – I, I use Messenger a real lot. I also use Slack. Have you ever used Slack, have you, Messenger? Yeah, yeah Slack's pretty good. I, I use Slack with uh, an organisation I'm involved in. That's Canvas, mm-hmm. co-working. Well, you can, um, uh, I use Slack because there's a lot of things, a lot of, uh, uh, I don't know if you want, a lot of sites or whatever you do out there that can push to Slack, push messages to Slack. And yeah, then, Slack has got a lot of, uh, what we call them, plugins or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So like if, so, so even, say, with web hosting, if someone sends me a ticket, I can I can get a push through Slack, a bing on my phone from Slack, yeah. saying, or someone's just sent me yeah. a ticket. Slack um, is just another another method of communication I use, but mm-hmm. nonetheless, what's important to me is SMSs will show on the phone without touching my watch. Uh, I show on the watch without touching my phone because I've been fine for driving and touching my phone before, and that is a hell of a sting. It's hundreds of dollars mm. and plenty of plenty of points. I'm low on points. Well, I, I, yeah, because I, I start talking to my watch in the car. It's it's uh it, it's I'm getting better at it. I think we both. No, got I, a... I, don't, I don't talk. I don't. No, speech to text is awful because it's Chinese. Oh, he yeah. doesn't understand English very well. So he'll say, "Call Glenn uh, on his mobile number," and it'll go. It'll show. It'll bring up. If I can only do speech to text, it's very limited. But mm. if I just, I can press on the microphone and get speech to text, and I say, "Call Glenn on his mobile," and half those characters will come up Chinese, and half of them will come up. In English, it's not very good, and until the updates come through, it's not much good other than getting uh, getting notifications and stuff. Now uh, that's very good. Now, um, can we move on? Yes, yes, we can. Right. Money so, stories. That's very good. Uh, so just so just quickly, that that uh, pairs to your uh, your Samsung phone or whatever other Android phone you've got. Well, your yeah, Android. Well, I happen to have a Xiaomi phone as well. It's a Xiaomi watch and a Xiaomi phone. Oh, two little peas in a pod. All right. Now, Aussie Broadband, they've officially listed on the ASX uh, the, the, under the ticker of ABB. So the company said its initial public offering was, offering was oversubscribed. I think I remember saying that on the podcast probably about a month ago that it was, uh, they were offering the shares to their people what, 24 hours before the public for a dollar a share. And I thought, well... well what's, what's oversubscribed mean? They tried to sell too many. Oh, yes. so, yeah. People, well, people said we want some, but it wasn't enough to go around. That's what I right, okay. imagine. Yeah, Managing Director Phil Britt said the funds raised will be used to speed up infra- infrastructure development, increase its customer base and expand the product offering. One particular focus, though, is that the ongoing, they're, they're laying uh, dark fibre around the joint. I don't, it doesn't say where, but... Is, is that, so is that uh, independent of MBN? Well, I'll get to that. Hang on. So let me show you the bloody uh, screen. There we go. So, uh, which is set to cost $67 million to help Aussie broadband reduce its reliance on third-party infrastructure and deliver long-term cost savings. Our own fibre in the ground goes to the heart of our approach to the business, the MD said. It means that we can control quality and improve our customer experience even more. And it means we can start to drive down our backhaul costs. The rollout, which started in May this year, is expected to be completed by 2022. Uh, now, just as a bit of a history, bit of a history lesson on uh, uh, Aussie broadband, it was formed in two thousand and eight. It was a merger between Latrobe Valley-based Wideband Networks. Uh, it was That's founded, my was an RSP, was it? Must have been some. Yeah, must have been founded by yeah. Britt, who was is now the MD there, and some dude called John Risinger, and Warrnambool-based. West Vic Broadband. So they probably, yeah, probably little ISPs just hanging down in Victoria somewhere. The company said now it's the Australia's fifth largest MBM provider. Is that is that is that a good uh, a good badge of honour? Is it like fifth? There's not that many in there, is there? Fifth must be close. to Well, last. considering no, you've got to look at how long they've been around. I reckon they, they've looking at how long they've been around and um, uh, the the ones that are bigger than them. Like who's going to be the biggest? You're probably looking at uh, Telstra. Telstra be the top, Optus second of them, then TPG Vodafone or Optus TPG Vodafone probably be in the same category. Hmm. Then you then you Exitel I think is up there with one of the bigger ones. Yeah, there's a few in there I suppose. Dodo. There's a few. No, no, that is not big. No, that, well <laughs> I just said one. four. That's Telstra, Optus, Vodafone, uh, Telstra, Optus, then Vodafone, TPG. Oh, I, I think Exitel. Oh, I 
Yeah, yeah sorry, a bit I I net, and then uh, probably um, Aussie broadband commander. No, no, let's not talk about that. No, we won't talk about them. Okay, so uh, we've come a, we've come a long way from twenty seven thousand customers in June two thousand and seventeen. Last month they connected their three hundredth customer. That's all right, and a hundred thousand net gain in over five what, months. What would you say? That's their three hundredth customer. Three hundred thousandth customer. Oh, you said three hundred. Yeah, yeah they're, they're strong. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say they've got 300 customers more. Wow, that's a big move. Yeah, so well, so do you want me to do those figures again? 27,000 in June 17. Last yeah. month, 300,000. Uh, and that's that great. included 100,000 net gain in over five months. Because I'm with them. I love them. I do. Yeah, I, and I, they're, they're, if, you need, if you need customer support, I don't need it. But if you need customer support, they are fantastic. They're not cheap, but geez, they... they oh, I don't know about they that. Get, oh, they're all right. Not, not cheap compared to the cheap ones that I use. Oh, they're cheaper than Telstra, though. Oh, yeah. But, like, I, I can get mine connection for as little as about 40, 50 bucks. For what, how much? What speeds and capacity? Well, the, the speed that suits me, which is 12. Oh, why bother? What? what <laughs> I beg your pardon? I, I, could, I could run faster than that. Yeah. My... I well, I'm using 12 now, and is there any problems? <laughs> no. Okay, now, no, look, before no, I... No, you big hog. Before... Before I finish off on that, I just thought um, I'd share the uh, the share price now. So it started off at a dollar and closed today at two, two dollars. So and how long has that been up for? Oh, a month or so, not long. Is it that, that is that a big achievement comparatively? Well, you would have doubled your money. So that's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, true. Yeah. So if you if you dumped hundred grand, which I don't think you could have. Well, maybe you could have, but if you dumped a hundred grand last month, you'd be out and sold today. Well, you'd make a hundred grand in a month. That's all right. Yeah, true. I, I have a lot of faith in Aussie broadband, and I hope that they really do rock uh, the big boys too. Yeah, yeah. Because their their customer service and their they've had a throw. There's the big boys. They're relying on history to keep them afloat, and that's not a good reason for a company to be successful because they were good was because they were once. Well, you know, like I've got an app and then from the app, from the Aussie broadband app, I can, I can see all the normal things like my, you know, uh, profile and blah, blah, blah. But I can also see my connection status and outages. And so I can, I can do, I think three or four things on the app that can help me kick my connection. I can reset the connection. I can do a loop back test or something. I can do four things on that on that app uh and and i don't even have to ring them and when you do ring them uh and when there's an outage they seem to get a lot like they they get updates to the outage quite often uh more often than telsha where you could be a whole week without an update and you're just going well what's going on or or you call them and say have you got a problem and they go oh have we and then they end up you're the one that ends up doing their job for and reporting to them that they have a problem yeah, and but and but the, and the good thing is, like you know, like I've got a guy that I talk to now, and he rang me through the weed. He goes, I've, I said, what have you been doing or whatever? He goes, I've just been on the phone to Telstra for an hour because his his, his MBN keeps dropping out. But he goes, you know, I can't get anywhere with him because I'm on the phone for an hour, but we haven't really got into the nuts and bolts. Of it. I just keep telling him my name and address and and trying to work out my number, oh, what me, yeah. prob- you know, like because you know when I you remember when I used to ring him. They're just all about that. They say, um, now yeah, what's your name? Can you spell that? Oh, what's your address? Can you spell that? And then they repeat it. Oh my God. No, then, then, I, then they disconnect you, call back, they'll transfer you. Then they'll disconnect you when they transfer you. Then they'll say, oh, we're closing now, so they go home. Mm. Yeah. yeah, no, I've, I've uh, unfortunately, um, and a lot of people come to me, because that's one of, one of my areas I, I specialize in now. I've got some pretty powerful tools I use to diagnose connections uh, and determine where the problems are. And people just don't want to, don't, don't want to and don't have the time or patience to deal with uh, these big companies. And I usually have to step in and do these things for them. Mm. Yes, and that's where ATH Web Hosting comes in. Nice personalized service. Now, uh, yes. Tell me about uh, the chat features on Google. Chat, oh, no, right, we're jumping forward to that one. That's my story. Chat features. Okay. I do there's that. A I new, jump there's around. There's a new feature. Um, click on, on that link. Show the people. There's a new feature in um, in on Android. This is all Android-centric. I'm a bit Android-centric. 
um, the top one, what, why, what are chat features? Now, Apple has had chat features Apple to Apple in the past oh. for a, a long time where you can see when someone's so – I can't demonstrate, but if I go into um, – no, I better not show that. We know what you mean. When yeah, someone okay. – when someone re it's like a Skype chat or a Facebook chat. You see the other person responding. Yeah, yeah. And you can see – you see – and basically at the moment, this is called – this is part of what's called uh, RCS, real – uh, uh, real, uh, uh, real communication services, or yeah, rich communication services. Rich, yeah, yeah. Is that mentioned on there? Yeah, rich communication services, which Android has been banging on about for years, and they've been trying to catch up with Apple on that one. Apple, Apple's done a really good job of it. The difference between Apple and Android, Android, you can put, I think you can put Google Messages. Messages is a, a SMS application you use on a mobile phone. On, on Android phones, at least, anyway. On Apple phones, you can only use the messaging app on an Apple phone, and that's it. I'm pretty sure you can install the Google Messages on an Apple phone. Oh. So that makes it cross-platform. Apple, once upon a time, said they were going to do cross-platform, and they didn't follow through. They didn't do it. Interesting. And if they had it, that would... Um, if they did more cross-platform stuff, that would give them a better standing. But they, they, they didn't. And um, anyway, now... Um, Google's come to the show, and as long as you know, users are both, so go to that first uh, that I link at the top. It gives the three main features in the dot point there. Okay, it's a bit small for me. Can you read them out? Uh, show you when someone is typing. Yeah, that's your little wobbly line. Yeah, offer read receipts. Uh, show when someone has read or received your message, as well as showing your contact when you read their message. Yeah, same as very similar to Facebook Messenger. Yeah. Uh, send your messages over mobile data and Wi-Fi. So if you didn't even have a mobile connection, you could use it, I think. Yeah. Yeah, because I think... Which is why Apple, Apple can do it. Oh, I... Th uh, they... Yes, it has to have some form of internet connection. They can't do yeah. it if... Yeah, not, that, well, so, so does this. Yes. When it says Wi-Fi, that means internet Wi-Fi. Yeah, so yeah, so I'm just saying it, it can't just happen over 4G. Or as as... You can still get calls on your... If you run out of data, you can still get calls, but you can't get no internet. You don't get this feature. Oh, okay. Whereas I think with Android, once again, Android's a bit more flexible. Android's a bit more flexible, and it will um, likely give that option. I haven't tried it that much yet, but, I but I've, been, I've been waiting for years. I don't know how it would without no internet, because it would... It couldn't send that signal through the telephone. But you don't, you don't send, you don't send on your telephone. Your computers connect the internet because you can get, you can run messages on your computer. You don't have to run it on a phone. I thought with Apple you could do that as well. Go to apple.com and. Yeah, but I'm saying send. without internet access, you wouldn't be able to do it. Oh no. Uh, without no, 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 no. You're right. With either either platform. Because I'm just they're, they're two very similar platforms. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Um, let's let's you share files and high resolution photos. And look, one of the other things that maybe it will help do is when I went to Android for my little stint over on that side of things, uh, this yeah. is one of the things that I really didn't like about the the, the Google phone. Uh, it was, and also group messages. Now I tried to download apps and stuff, and but group messages, I was just missing out on everything. All my, all yeah, my and, friends yeah, have and got with it, Apple, I'm Apple, out. they really they handle that well with the group thing. Whereas, mm. and I've up and that's why I've been wanting this RCS thing, which will be cross-platform. Unlike Apple, Android goes, we'll share it with Apple as well. Mm. Uh, that means that everyone gets to be on the same platform. Then that's why that's why Facebook Messenger was so powerful because it was very clearly platform. It wasn't platform centric. It was cross platform, and it didn't matter whether you had a crappy old phone, a new phone. You generally had, uh, and didn't matter what what brand it is. You had uh, the same functions, shared functions, and RCS will bring that now to everyone who wants it. Can I use chat features with Apple iMessage? While you get many of the same benefits as iMessage, they are different messaging services. A conversation between someone using Google Chat features and Apple iMessage will be sent through SMS, MMS. Yeah. See, the, the problem with Apple, Apple iMessage runs only on Apples and only communicates with Apples. Mm. Uh, whereas with RCS, that's, that can operate on 
Android or Apple yes. or whatever you want. So therefore, there's more flexibility in that system, and that's one of the uh, ethos from what I can see of the uh, uh, Google and Android. They they they, they, they don't try and uh, limit it through marketing tactics. Mm. All right, good stuff. Now that was that one, no, and that's uh, there's, you watch that space. More's going to come. Yeah, yeah. Because look, I remember the first thing I did when I got my Android, I tried to install apps that gave me the features that I miss from the Apple, yeah. from the iPhone. Yeah, no, you, you, you tried to. There's some things just don't work, and that was one thing that was missing, and I missed it too. And that's why I, I, very quickly moved across to Facebook Messenger, and nearly all of my family, other than those that are uh, dead set Apple fans. Mm. Um, they we communicate by message because you know when when you send a message it's very important to me when you send a message you want to know those when they've seen it yeah yeah and uh, it, it, with I people would send message by I message and you wouldn't know I could send them SMSs and I wouldn't know whereas if they send from Apple to Apple you do mm. oh it comes in handy yeah that's right yeah. Um, okay so we all know what Bitcoin and the the cryptocurrencies and so forth is. Well, here's a big step in the right direction. PayPal is going to allow Bitcoin and crypto spending. So PayPal has entered the crypto market, announcing that its customers will be able to buy and sell Bitcoin and other virtual currencies using their PayPal accounts. Those virtual coins could then be used to buy things from the 26 million sellers, which PayPal has. Uh, they plan to roll this out in the US over the next few weeks. We'll have a full rollout early next year sometime. The other cryptocurrencies to be added will be Ethereum, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, which is a spin-off from Bitcoin. Disappointed there's no Ripple. I've got some of those. you got Ripple, yeah. They yeah. got died in the ass. I got Rippled, all right. Uh, all could be stored directly with the PayPal digital wallet. When it comes to using the virtual coins, PayPal will convert the cryptocurrency into the relevant national currency. So the company being paid will never receive the virtual coins, just the correct amount of um, debt, pounds, dollars, yens. Or whatever, so um, you can effectively take those bitcoins you didn't have any use for, and put yeah, them out there oh, I've got it laying world. around. Still, will be traceable though. Um, well, the bitcoins aren't as such, but if you start buying things in the real world, well, yeah, yeah, then they'll go. Well, hello, hello, hello. Well, that's that's a real. That's an interesting approach because I can't say there's other um, uh, monetary systems that uh, do that. Not that mm. I know of many monetary systems. No, and, it's, and of course you've heard of, uh, you know, you, you hear of these, well, I've never seen them, but Bitcoin ATMs and things like this. And, yeah. you know, um, ransomware is a good place to spend your Bitcoins. And yeah. but, but other than that, like, uh, you, yeah, look, I was at some uh, business expo the other week, last week, and there was a guy there from a place called Coin. I think it was Q-O-I-N or something. And yeah. it must be a local thing, but he's uh he his point of difference, I guess, with coin was a cryptocurrency was that you load the app up on say mine and your phone, and then I can send you, I can just go up and and tap your phone or send you money directly into your wallet. Um, so it's a, it's still quite, a physical connection to some extent. Yeah, but very easily. Because uh, yeah. I, I said to him, look, that'd be good if I could, you know. He said you could buy. Well, no, he said you can buy it on your. You can buy stuff off your website, but <clears throat> the thing was, it couldn't really tell if it was you who paid for it, and that that was the downfall. And that's where I got sort of he was coming unstuck with me because I said to him, "Well, if I got five people that have ordered the same thing, how do I know which of them has paid?" And he goes, "Yeah, it's not not exactly um, tra it's uh, there's a there's a that's a bit of a downfall." Mm. But yeah, but I suppose PayPal doing it, I think that they might obviously they're going to rectify that. What's going to be you know. A, transactional invoicing and whatever it's going to match up yeah so yeah, yeah. so so it looks good uh that was just a yeah. quickie just a quickie uh it's interesting having said paypal because paypal is facing um ebay has been in the process of dropping paypal uh over the last i think uh it's only been another year or so and ebay is going to drop paypal why um because paypal uh, ebay is moving to other payment systems Right. Um, well, I know that sounds surprising. I, I got a notification a couple of years ago from PayPal to say, or from eBay to say, we're, we're moving forward, we're going to um, move away from PayPal. 
uh, unless they've changed their process. And I, th I think it's a crazy move because uh, PayPal and eBay are a great combination. Mm. And uh, but I was I was surprised to hear that then. And have you noticed on uh, eBay there's more and more payment systems coming in? For instance, you've got uh, Afterpay oh, is yes. just one. Mm. Um, uh, and there is other methods of payment. You've got more credit cards. Uh, I've, I, had, I only use PayPal, so it doesn't. Does, you are, so you, you haven't gone through an Afterpay checkout? No, I hate Afterpay. Yeah, well, I was just, just going to say, if, if that's the case, like, I wonder if they add merchant fees on in the checkout because if they don't, then that's just going to drive prices up of all the products because each person's going to have to cater for the exorbitant Afterpay fees. That get charged. Yeah, yeah, no, no. There's after pays there. I'm simply all I'm simply saying is there's alternate payment systems. They introduce they with eBay. They're introducing new payment systems processes to uh, facilitate the loss of PayPal when that time comes. Right, right. Because um, I always thought I always thought that eBay owned PayPal or vice versa. Well, I thought that too. No, they, they, they were they were separate. There was good old uh, Elon Musk, I think, set up PayPal, and it was nothing to do with eBay. They just teamed up early in a piece. Because I you like look, I don't like PayPal much. I like them six out of ten. I don't know why. Well, but, uh, well I like them because of protection they offer when you buy but stuff. But that's why I like them. Yeah. Yeah, no, so that's the, the only reason I like them, yeah. Yes, because of the protection. Because like, when you look at it, though, like, you know, like, if, you, if you've if got thousands of dollars in your PayPal account, I would not be getting that out straight away. Because, like, like anything, PayPal's a private company. So if they go belly up, you're not getting that cash. So... Yeah, no, I don't sell sell much. Uh, I, anyway, I mostly buy. I keep a low balance, and I pretty much only use PayPal uh, to buy... For like what what people pay me in PayPal, and I'll buy stuff out of PayPal. So like um you know so someone buys some uh, a domain from me, and then I buy that domain with PayPal yeah. from the wholesaler. Oh, if that makes sense. You just do that for protection, do you? Or because you use credit card too, for that matter. Or you can, but I use it because I I don't want to have a balance a big balance in the PayPal account rather than transferring it into my bank account. I'll just I'll just use the PayPal as a float. Yeah, yeah, because mm. you, you, yeah, that's uh, you see, you have a different purpose. I, I trade, I trade, I specifically, I buy a lot of stuff on eBay and I sell very little. Um, so, mm. so that's I'm, I don't get I don't get money from PayPal. It's all outgoing. Yep, yep. And I do have headaches with some things, whereas you know I'm buying from China, I'm overseas, I'm not getting the proper, I'm paying extra for the GST and. And that, because you know, when you buy something overseas with eBay, you receive a tax invoice from eBay themselves. eBay are the actual ones that are selling your product when you buy from overseas. Because mm. well, they got to do the GST. Is that what you say? Where are you going? Yeah, yeah. Because eBay was forced to collect GST. So when you buy a uh, when you buy a mouse from China and uh, it arrives. You do have a tax invoice uh, against that, so you can claim your GST. Mm. And the company that is taxing you is a Swiss company. And the one, that, the funny thing is, with Australian consumer law, if you buy something, whoever's provided with that invoice is liable for that product that's been sold to you, not yeah, the seller. That's right. Yes, oh, I'm sure there'd be uh, other policies. I know oh, you're right with that, but surely there'd be some exceptions, like. Um, you get the exception, you know, with Facebook and Twitter. That's what they're in the news now. That you know, like they they can't be held liable for what someone posts on their yeah, um, account. I don't. I really don't know, but um, it's interesting. It's, uh, that's why I've. Well, when you buy, when I buy from Australia, if someone sells something and it, they don't have a business, they can't provide an ABN or a tax invoice. Uh, as opposed to buying from China, if you buy something for the same price with their GST component included. It means that you're effectively uh, getting that money back. You're getting ten percent discount mm. if, if you can claim it. That is, yeah, it must be a bit going on behind the in behind that back end there. Because like, so if eBay, if they're to give you a, a GST invoice, then if if they've been charged GST, then they can't add another ten percent. But if they buy it from someone overseas and they don't charge GST, then they've got to add ten percent. Yeah, it gets complicated. Be, yeah, there must be some stuff going on. We, we, we need Eric here for that one. Yeah, that's right. Uh, tell us about the uh, Google Meet, and it's not meat from the butcher. Yeah, M-E-A-T, yeah. Google Meet, uh, click on that link there. Bring it up. So Google Meet. Now, this is 
It's just another product that uh, Google has bought out. Um, they've been pushing a bit the last few weeks, and they, they, I think they've learned because they had their their Google Hangouts, they had their Google Duo, they had they've had a number of mm. different um, products which they've um, depreciated over time. But they're all the same. What is and this different? They're, they're all similar, but one one always uh, they, they all give similar results, and the reason. Google, this could be a good product, but why am I hesitating in uh, using that instead of you? Well, why don't I want to use that instead of using Zoom? Because Zoom has been Zoom since it started, and they haven't tried to bend it into something, something else. Mm. You don't want to start. You start the meeting, have you? Oh, I'll just have a look. <laughs> okay. Um, but this Google, it's going to be interesting to see. Oh, look at that! Cast, what? cast this meeting. That's interesting. Yeah, and you can cast it to you. Yeah, and they, they're gonna. They've got some great features which Zoom doesn't have, but they also are missing some features that Zoom does have. Mm. And um, it's just gonna be interesting to see where that goes. There's plenty of uh, reviews out there of Google Meet versus uh, Zoom. One of the uh, issues with Zoom is you have to have a Google account to do it. With Zoom, you don't. Zoom, you can just simply um, get the sh uh, the show uh, the, the Link to it and go in, and I think you're in. There's no um, no no account, no Zoom account required. How many people do you know that don't have a Google account? Not many. Even people have uh, Apple phones. They still have a lot of people still have Google. Accounts. Well, you need it, don't you, to do stuff? You don't have to have it. Um, Apple would uh, argue that point, but um, a, a lot of people have a Google account anyway. But it's still, the fact simply remains: you don't have to maintain. An account, an account if you don't want to. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that looks like you, have right. to, you have to sign in for Google Meet. Watch that space. It's going to be interesting to see where uh, Google Meet goes. Mm. I haven't got a reason to use it at the moment, and I don't know if I want to invest time or effort yeah. in learning something if Google sticks to their uh, habits and changes every three years. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? Like you're not going to go, oh, let's let's uh, put this, implement this into our nationwide <laughs> company because it'll be like dogs. You know, ass up in six months. But um, yeah, that, yeah. That, look, that's a good thing with Microsoft, isn't it? Like, you could probably they, still they stick. Yeah, you could probably still get. You, I don't know. Would I be wrong in saying you could probably still run a Windows ninety five app on Windows ten? It was is that is that is the bridge too far? Or well, I reckon you could, depending on. No, what is, app is, is is Windows ninety five thirty two bit? Windows what? Is Windows is it thirty two or sixteen bit? Windows 95? Yeah. It'd be 32? Uh, yeah, okay. there's an issue there with uh, the bits. You've got a 64-bit operating system. You want to run a... Oh, yes, okay. 16-bit is a problem. No, be, no. Oh, well, 16 would be, I, you'd yeah, think. Well, I, well, what was... Oh, I can't remember. It's, it, to look up Windows 95. Is it 32-bit? Oh, it probably is. Hang on, Windows 95 is a consumer, blah, blah, blah. Where's uh, 32? Uh, such as moving from a 16-bit. Okay, there are also major changes made to the core components of the operating system, such as moving from a mainly cooperatively multitask 16-bit architecture to 32-bit. So Windows... So when it, when it came out, it was 16-bit, and if they made an app that was designed to run 16-bit, I really don't think... That won't have... work. No, that won't, no, that won't I don't even work. think 32-bit would well, be... Uh... You can run 32 bits on a 64 machine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, you can actually. Yeah, 62. Because that's what I'm thinking. With... Um... With Windows 10, you've got a compatibility. I think you've still got that compatibility mode thing, which gives you 32-bit capability, but not 16. Yes. Well, so it, it looks depends like, on how the app was made. Look, just this is only just off the cuff, just speaking right now, so we don't really know. But I, yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd be inclined to think that Windows 95 started at 32 because it replaced the old the versions, Windows 3, 3.11, which were 16. Well, why does it say 16-bit there then? Does it say, does it say 16 somewhere? Yeah, well, it said up the top here, it said that it came, it re, there are major changes made to the core components. Uh, yeah, which, when, when it first came out, it was 16-bit, I think. 
The first operating system operating system in the nine family is the successor to Windows 3.1, and it was released to manufacturing August 15, 1995, and generally to retail August 24th. Windows 95 emerged. Windows 95 merged Microsoft's formerly separate MS-DOS and Windows products and featured significant improvements over its predecessor, most notably in the graphical user interface and its simplified plug-and-play features. There were also other major changes made to the core components of the operating system, such as moving from a mainly cooperatively multitask 16-bit architecture to a 32-bit preemptive multitasking architecture at least when running only 32-bit protected mode applications. Uh, okay. So it, it, I would say that it moved 3.11 was 16, and then 95... Okay. 95 went to 32. So you yeah. could be right. Out you of the gates right. at 32. Yep. Out of the gate. All right. Now, uh, look, this might be my last story for this uh, this t- this time on uh, the podcast. Oh, I've got two, actually. But let's go yeah, with... We're, we're, um, still, we're, still, we're still in quite a while. I know, that's why I've got to hurry. Now, <laughs> let's uh, go yeah. with JB Hi-Fi. Now, we all know and love JB Hi-Fi, don't we? Yeah, let, let oh, me that's right, yeah. Get, let me get the link here, paste it there, so I can show you the web page. There we go. Woo! JB Hi-Fi has launched its own on-demand delivery service in Victoria, but only while the COVID restrictions are around. So if you want to buy something, you jump on their website, buy it, and some little JB Hi-Fi dude will scoot around in his SUV and give it to you. How good's that? Oh, it has to be an SUV, does it? Yeah, why not? The uh, the attitude was that I want to keep my staff employed. I would do desperately do anything to keep my staff employed and getting a salary. Said to some boss dude at the JBI Fi. He said the currently has he currently has seventy five SUVs on the road, and if shoppers seventy five, yeah, seventy five, and if shoppers does, does he own them all? Well, leasing, he must. Yeah. No, it's probably staff. No, oh, kick on. Uh, so, yeah, 75 SUVs on the road, and if shoppers make an order by 2 p.m. and use the door-to-door service, it will be at their home by 8. So uh, the retailer also offered a three-hour rushed courier service in Melbourne, Sydney, Canberra, Brisbane, Perth, and Adelaide. Rushed. The new <laughs> door-to-door service is delivered by JBI Fi, uh, yeah, team member. <laughs> I was going to say something else, but better not. There you go. How good's that? Jeez, eh? so they do their own deliveries. They're doing their own Uber-style deliveries. That's right. But you're right. It's it's big for where it's needed because they can't get out and about to do this stuff, whereas mm. we don't have a problem with that. But you're right. Like 75 SUVs, that's that is a lot. And not that every staff sound, member. That doesn't sound. That doesn't sound right. Like 75 SUVs. Like how it's much only yeah, only because of COVID. Unless yeah, you, I, unless you rent them. Well, maybe. <laughs> There's well, more to that. That's not where it stops, I reckon. No, maybe, maybe he's gone out to um, his budget still around or whatever those car rental companies are. <laughs> are they, his budget gone? Yeah, it's called TAA. I thought that died as well. Weren't, that, weren't they airplanes? <laughs> <laughs> but, Sorry, I was just I was tongue in cheek there. <laughs> okay, so who who, who does uh, Eurocar or something now? Whatever, you know what I mean. Those car rentals. So, yeah, a thrifty car rental. <laughs> Yeah, so he's probably going, well, you know what? The, these dudes aren't doing any business either because no one can go anywhere. So how about we utilise their fleet of SUVs and we say, well, okay, well, instead of charging us 200 a day, how about you charge us 10 bucks a day and we'll keep the juices rolling through the motors? Uh, I think you're dreaming. I doubt that's the case. There'd be some. I, I, there'd be some I don't know what the case is, but I bet you they're probably staff vehicles start, and they get paid for the use of their vehicles. But they all wouldn't have SUVs, though. Well, maybe that's the criteria to work at JB Hi-Fi that you own an SUV. Probably. Maybe. (laughs) All right. And uh, look, Dropbox, all you Dropbox lovers, and I know you're out there. Is this this another story? Yeah. Oh, last one then, eh? Yeah, have you got another one? No, that's it. Uh, Yeah, that's what I thought, so I'll I'll quickly add up this one. But I know know you Dropbox lovers, and I think Paul might be one of them. Are you a Dropbox lover? No. No, 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 because Dropbox owns the copyright of anything that goes on there. And if they don't, then they give you rights to access it. Oh, you little... OneDrive and Google Drive don't. Yeah, right. So if, you, if you're if you in a paparazzi and you take a very a very valuable photo, well, this is this is my understanding of it, is if someone takes a photo that's very valuable, puts it on there, they could effectively say, we have ownership, copyright ownership of this. If you want to use it, uh, they, they they give you permission to access access uh, their stuff. Yes, but then so that, they could take it away and sell it. 
But then that could also be the, the, the negative of that, is that, say, someone threw up some child pornography. Who's responsible for that then? They are, because they they own the copyright of it. Well, then they would um, come back to their uh, policies then. Yeah, right, yeah. yeah so they, they do it both their way. Yeah, two, so two that's, so that's why, uh, remember that, that went under the radar a bit about... Um, about two years, two or three years ago, that policy was changed and there was a bit of a hell of a law about it. No one seemed to understand it, so everyone ignored it. And I think that policy is still in place, but who knows, remember I'm wrong, you, you viewers and listeners out there, if you uh, uh, can, 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 can categorically, categorically confirm that that's wrong, please let us know. Yeah, so so getting back to the me little Dropbox story here quickly, uh, Dropbox yep. is introducing a family plan. So that's good. Up to six people on a single plan sharing data. So that's pretty good. Two terabytes, in fact, of storage is shared between all participants. Each person can store their own files privately. And there's also room for the family to have a shared folder. The plan includes Dropbox passwords, password manager for Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android, uh, Dropbox Vault for individual sensitive files, and... Uh, Dropbox usual computer backup and mobile photo backup features are also included along with the recently introduced ability to transfer photos and videos from Facebook and also uh, and also another good feature of it which I think I spoke about last month or so was that you can do a col col collaborative uh, edits of Word documents and Word Excels uh, through Dropbox if you even if you don't have the uh, licenses. Uh, the price... So that, it, that runs in a web, web browser does it? Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah, so the same as you do with Google Drive or or, or Word Online or whatever yes. it is. Because you can get the free the, the free Excel say or Word online, but you can't use the. It's harder to use the collaboration. I don't know if you can. Yes. But once you yeah, like, collaboration, is something you miss out unless you got three six five. Yeah, but if you go if you open it through Dropbox, uh, you can open a shared version or something, and then another person can open it as well, and then you yeah. can collaborate. There's three main platforms, OneDrive, Dropbox, and Google Drive. They all compete in the same method. Yeah. What about poor old iCloud? No, no they're, they're not competitors. No. Uh, look, I, I bumped up my iCloud to, what, five bucks a month? Can you believe you it? You don't use it for collaboration. You might use it for storage. Yeah. Oh, no, you don't use it for that. You use it to store your photos and videos. No, I just use it to back up the phone. Well, but, yeah, okay, well, backup phone. It's all to do with phones. If you didn't have a phone, why would you have an iCloud account? Yeah, well, the main reason I went from the, the free... No, I think I had the $1.49 one. I bumped it up to five so I could get the family sharing. And now everyone mm. can share the 200 gig. And everyone... all, three, all three of them have this. Mm. But iCloud and iPhones, you know, you've got to stick with it. Stick with the strength. Um... You think you're telling me? Yeah. So yeah, no, no thanks. So where did I put? Where's my family? Oh, here we go. Hang on quickly. I'll get the prices for you because I've got prices. Oh, it's not cost. It's not free. Two two terabytes. Yeah, no, it's not free. So I'll get, I'll get everything for you guys. You know, one day two terabytes will be free. Probably. Oh, I saw. Uh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you after this quickly. What before we go? Okay. So Dropbox is twenty nine thirty nine a month, uh, but it's cheaper if you pay upfront and annually. Yeah. Uh, six users, share two terabytes, family room, automatic backup, connect unlimited devices, mm, handy, uh, access your files when you're online, offline, handy, send big files like videos with Dropbox transfer, handy, manage your login with Dropbox passwords, who cares, store sensitive info in a pin protected fo in a pin protected folder with Vault, send documents for e-signature with Hello Sign, mm, handy, wipe devices yeah. remotely, handy, uh, recover your account after 30 days. Shouldn't be silly and deleted in the first place. Yeah, and all those features, all those features are duplicated in uh, the other companies' ones. Probably, yeah, you probably. Well, well, OneDrive has a vault in there. They implemented about four months ago. Mm. Now, I was looking at what I was quickly going to say before we go. I was looking at a uh, some some prices came through. <clears throat> One of the wholesalers I'm with, uh, still with for computer parts. I still get the emails and stuff, and uh, I think it was a one terabyte drive, thirty five dollars X. Oh wow! How's that? So what's that? Thirty eight dollars fifty ink. <laughs> so for one terabyte. Yeah, know, but drives just... drives will slow, will be eventually become un, unwanted and unneeded. Everything will go cloud based. I would love to go cloud only, but I've got I bought a five terabyte drive the other day as well as another three terabyte and another few terabytes because um, I do uh, drive images mm. and. Mm. Uh, I bought a five terabyte drive and I 
because my actual main main server I got a home here was a desktop. And I thought, I reckon I could make this, because I've got, I got a number of spare laptops. So I thought, I'll use this laptop for it. And what did I do? Bought myself a, a two and a half inch, five terabyte drive, not realizing there's different thicknesses in them. And yes, it's actually too right. fat for the laptop. And I had to, oh, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't care much about a laptop. So I basically just jammed it in there. <laughs> and, but something, the funny thing is, the BIOS on this computer, somehow something wrong with the keyboard when I was doing something in the BIOS. And a password protected the BIOS, and now I can't unlock the BIOS to uh, detect extra drives. And I contacted oh, Dell, and they said, uh, "New motherboard time." So you can't, you can't like reset the. You know, you can short the BIOS or short short. No, laptops, laptops don't have a um, jumper. But you, and there's no other way to do it. No, no, no they you call them and they say it's easy, just replace the motherboard. Handy. <laughs> Yes. But you know what? I really like this laptop. It's, it's one of those Dell XPS ones. It's actually a pretty decent one. I bought a new one. Oh, and I bought a new one, and I got it probably like a week or so ago. And Adele, Adele? No, no, no. Oh. no. She's a singer, isn't she? So I didn't get, didn't get her around. D E double L. So I, uh, I, I, now it's a Lenovo. But what's interesting is that I, I bought an AMD chip. Don't tell you me. You an AMD. No, I am now on the laptop. Oh, gee. <laughs> yes. but, I, I am these not bad. Yeah, look, I, I, look, I was looking. I, I wanted a, a laptop around about $1,000, right? I didn't want to spend yeah. 2000 And all the cheaper ones were a little bit, uh, didn't seem as good. So anyway, I saw this AMD, is it Ryzen 7 or something? Ryzen, and, yeah. And uh, um, so that against an i7 uh, at same speed, there's, there's two or $300 difference. And so I did the benchmarks, and this Ryzen 7 was beaten or equal to these, you know, these low-end i7s anyway. And I'm like, well, you know what? I know Will's always banging on about how good AMDs are. I, I, I texted him. I said, hey, what do you reckon, Will? He goes, go for it. You won't look back. So I did, no. and uh, it, it's pretty snappy. I'm quite happy at the moment. Yeah, it's good. It's good. I, I generally only go for I, Intel i3, i5, or i7, just, just for simplicity. <laughs> I have got hag clients. Well, what happens, I think, I think the AMD stuff dates, I think it dates faster, it slows faster than well, um, Intel does. Well, you know, before I bought my Synology thing, NAS, yeah. Which, yeah. We, which I spoke about last time, yeah. I, I had a server, a computer tower, which is just a computer with like 12 heaps of two terabyte drives in it. And now yeah. that was an AMD um, Athlon for norm or something. Now that that computer, that motherboard AMD chip must be, geez, that that'd have to be coming up to ten years old. Ten years old, old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was still going every day. It chugged yep. along every day. And um, well, my, my, my experience of AMDs is they they run hotter, which means they have more fan noise. True. This this is a little bit bit um hotter, but I just put another fan in the case, and that sort of calmed it down a bit. But um, therefore, therefore, you'd have another fan which would make noise. It was a silent fan. It was a, it was a, it was a quiet one. Was it op if it was operating? It wouldn't have been silent. Silent is zero. Well, that must be what I needed. It, it wasn't working. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm rather sensitive to fan noise, as you, I think I've said in the past. I hate fan noise, and that's one of the problems with the laptop I put in the lounge room because that's where the, the server is. Uh, it's, because I, 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 I had a fanless uh, desktop before, and now I've got this thing, and it's got its. It makes noise. I don't think I like it. <laughs> yeah, well, this laptop, the Lenovo Ryzen 7, I, <clears throat> it's SSD. I don't think there's a fan in it. I think it's just a, yeah, it's just all circuits. It's good. It's good. All well, right. You've got, did you say there's no fan in it? I don't think there is. Uh, you doubt that. I've never heard it. And I've yeah, listened. I'll put it up to my ear. Put it in the oven when it running and see if it um, and turn the oven on, see yeah. if it uh, turns the fan on, see if it cuts in, unlike a fridge. Yeah, opposite. Yeah. All right. Well, let's go because we're burbling. And yeah, um, wrap it. <clears throat> so you can reach me at Glenn at AussieTechers.com.au. You can reach Paul somewhere in Toowoomba. Just look for you can entire computer look for entire computer services. Entire computer services. You'll see him, or you'll see him riding around on his bike, looking at the sky, hoping for rain. <laughs> <laughs> How's your thumb? Good stuff. Look at that. Good as gold. It's finally cut the last bit of 
stuff. And your knee or something? For those of you, those of you knee, knee was not a problem. No, the thumb, that nail was completely uh, taken off in a bicycle accident. I had 17 broken bones between there and there. Yeah, right. And it's all healed up and I can pick my nose really good with it. Very good, very good. Um, all right. Well, I don't think I've got anything else to uh, to say other than uh, we wish you a very good evening and uh, or, and good week. Uh, the NRL, yes, go the Panthers. The AFL, I don't really know who's... What do you, what do you mean go the Panthers? Aren't you Storm or something else? Why would I be Storm? I hate the Storm. No, what, what, what's, what's that other... Those other ones you like? The Sharks? Brothers. No. Sharkies? Huh? The Sharks. Sharks, actually. You keep on talking about them. Yeah, they're not playing. They got kicked. They got punted. So. <laughs> you can't change. No, but there's, well, you got to go for someone, haven't you, in the grand final? No, um, you just go for everyone. No, I'll go for Penrith now. In the grand final, and okay. then you pick your team on the day. But yeah, so um, I hope you got, everyone has a bit of a barbecue or whatever. I saw, oh, I feel, I still, I am so uh, empathetic or whatever the word is that I've, I'm sorry for you guys in Melbourne and Victoria because I saw somewhere today on the news I was looking for stories for the show that they've got a police drone and it's apparently going to go around looking for people who may be having a barbecue on grand final day. Can you believe oh, it? Gee. Can you it believe it? In, it was held in Brisbane, I think, the semi-final. Yes, the grand final. But like, oh, you, grand final, yeah. you, have a, you have a barbecue on grand final day. That's what you do. That's just yeah. what happens. Yeah. And, but, and they're going to... Oh, I feel so sorry for you guys. So I'm um, just hanging there. I can't see it happening for much longer, surely. November, Mid-November, was it? You guys have been stuck in your house for six months. It's crazy. They've got a good leader, haven't they? Oh, it's got, they need well, they need something. They, they don't need him by the sounds of it. But anyway, like, I couldn't handle it. You'd be going mental. But hang in there. Hang in there. We're rooting for you. All right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, thanks, Paul. Thanks. It's good to see you again. And um, uh, thanks for everyone who tuned in and downloads and all watches. So cheers. Good on you. All right. Uh, see you, Paul. See you, Glenn. Have a good week. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Outro, so I'll just go. So, this, this audio is not going over. Yeah, what? I'm not, not, not going to edit. That's all, folks. <laughs> is that what that is? Is that where it came from? I've got no idea. <laughs> That's all, folks. Yeah.